Hello everyone, I am Erica of BeatingSchool.com and you are watching Coffee Time with Erica, my weekly BD broadcast. Today I would like to walk you through the jewels that we have already made during the Tulip Mania team with emphasis on what you have created and also reminding you, us, everyone, of the tricks tips that we have learned along the way that you can bid into your future BD repertoire. So let me know, please, if you can hear me and see me. Sarah is here. Hi, Sarah. Jessica says she can hear me and see me. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for letting me know, Jessica. Miriam is here and Tanya is here. Really nice to see you today, ladies. Sherry, Cindy, Antoinette. Thank you so much, Cindy. It's one of the designs that we have created last year during uh, No One Has to Be the One. It's called the Louisiana. Sandra joined us. Alison, Ariane, Honey is here. Then we have some Facebook user friends. Cheryl. Sandra. Sandra says also she hears and sees me. Marianne, Natalie, Kata is here, and Lutka is here too. So I'm really happy that we came together today, ladies. I hope that you also have a sunny, flowery day, just like I do finally in Amsterdam. Uh, for what I know for sure is that, bead, that your bead mats are already in bloom. And today, when I was going through the creations from from you that came together during these past weeks that I was kind of blown away by your creativity and all your creative ideas. Also, Kara joined us and Sunshine and Yosin. And if you haven't heard your name, then it means that I don't see your name. For some reason, you either did not click the link or there is some technical problem. You need to clear your cookies or maybe restart your browser. So, hello ladies, hello from the Beading School Club, hello from the Beading School Facebook page. Later, I will also upload the video to the YouTube channel so you can then watch the recording. So, and Gun Helen, hi Gun Helen. So, let's start and walk along the timeline of what uh, we have created so far. Uh, while I am talking about the designs and show your creations, then let's please stick to questions that concern the designs themselves and the beads that are included and the tutorials and techniques and whatever that is connected to what we are talking about at the moment. And then if you will have different questions, then you will have an opportunity to ask them all at the end of the broadcast and I will do my best to answer everything. Just one last question I will answer before that. Belinda asks if I can see her name. No, unfortunately, I don't see your name only as you have typed it in. And hi, Deb. So I will also put my hand camera on screen because I would like to show you some of the technical details of Jewels. Also, I am while we are talking about these designs, then I am super curious that what you found interesting about them, what you found uh, about the thread paths, what you found when you were experimenting with different color combinations, how did you feel uh, if you have met with some new bead shapes maybe that you have tried for the very first time? So always when we are talking, uh, talking about a design, then please join the conversation, type in your experience. I will read it and we can discuss it. And that would be the, uh, I think, uh, the biggest value of today's small get together because yeah like 
the designs are nice, but we also want to mainly we want to learn something that we can then take with us uh, to the future and to our future creations. So let's focus on those details that we would like to remember. And let's start with Blue Amable, the first signature jewel. I will always show mine on my hand camera and I will show some examples that you have beaded next to it. So this was actually the prototype that I have beaded maybe eight years ago while Zuzi was visiting me in Prague and I was packing up, we were packing up my life and I was moving here to Amsterdam. And then when we started the Tulip Mania team, then I beaded it in another version. And why I find it in interesting, indeed, as Cindy says, I loved learning how to layer beads. So if you look at this design from the side, then you see that even if it's not big in size, holding it on my fingers, then you can see that it consists, it is substantial and it consists of different layers. And even if there are some bigger beads or petals that have only one hole, then everything, everything is neat and sturdy. So we, cre uh, we created different kinds of connections and hopefully uh, we'll remember them when we are creating in the future too. So let's look at some of your creations. This is, for example, from Terry. And here, many of you chose different kinds of uh, colors. And Terry here pulled together blues and oranges and bronze. And that looks amazing. And then we have here Sarah's. Sarah was the first one, I think. The way Deb in the meanwhile says, I love the sturdiness of it and all the layers. And Ariana says, I liked the sensation when the funny Diabolo shapes settle in exactly the way they supposed to. Indeed, those uh, here we can see it really well on Sarah's example that there are two layers of seed beads even around the Diabolo shape holding the Diabolo tight and anchoring it where it is supposed to stay. And hi, Nitti. And Yosin says, I found the instructions so clear. I'm always super happy to hear that, Yosin. I had a little bit of anxiety when I was drawing this because drawing layers into 2D, that is tricky indeed. But I'm super happy that it was clear at the end. Cheryl says, I have not worked with the petal beads yet, so I am looking forward to catching up and doing this. I'm also looking forward to see your version. And indeed, I became a bit blurry and I don't know why. <laughs> Try to clean. Okay, cleaning help. <laughs> So, so, <laughs> so this was the first blue amable that we have seen, I think. And this was beaded by Sarah. I love that Sarah used the dirty dagger beads. And that was like, in one, this pendant is elegant because of the silver and the black and the metallic blue, but it is also playful because of the, because of the dots. And then we have here not one, but it's three blue amables beaded by Miriam. Miriam, do I sense an addiction there? And Miriam, on, in the blue one, she used a lotus flower cabochon. And that is uh, really nice to know that that works well too. That's also 14 millimeter size. And this is Lutka's. And uh, I saved these photos before Lutka would have posted 
her newest creation, but Lutka actually played a lot with different ribbons. So she just posted in the Beading School Club a version where she uh, kind of made this into a medallion with an even bigger ribbon but it is like uh, with the with the thinner one it's also really nice to see that it goes together so well and i actually oh miriam says yes i like the pieces uh, that the pieces are getting sturdier but they will not lose their easygoing style and Ariana says, I, and I was amazed how all the petals which stand in all direction at first came so sturdy and tidy at the end. Indeed, there is like a stage of this uh, motif, I think, where you feel like, oh my God, this is, this is messy. And then everything becomes clear and clean and just falls into the, its, uh, its uh, place. What was new also here that we have created a kind of a, an order, an additional layer from the size eight seed beads and the fire polished beads and some smaller seed beads too, to make sure that everything is pulled together nicely. So that was also a new technical solution that we were uh, experimenting with during the beading school academy. And <laughs> another very important lesson that we have learned, and I have also learned in the meanwhile, that with, with this example, that even if we love edged beads, they do not work all the time. I'm saying that I also learned it in the meanwhile, because actually one of the daggers cut my thread too. So indeed, we need to stick to the edged beads only at places when the thread is not bending next to them or we don't have really a lot of thread passes. So this is not ready yet because I did not have enough of the of the six millimeter pearls, but also I wanted to play here a little bit with another solution on how to hang your pendant. Often you ask me how to make the motif into a finished jewel. And not all the possibilities are always included in all the tutorials because I think that actually there are very few exceptions when a motif is not suitable, would not be suitable for something. With the motifs that we are beading, we all, most of the time, like I would say like 99% of the time, we have all the doors and all the possibilities open for us to turn it into earrings, into a pendant, into a bracelet, into a brooch, into whatever we would like to. But it's nice to have different possibilities also the, for the same type of jewel. And when you ask me how to make it into a pendant, then I usually say add the peyote bail. That is the easiest thing that you can do. I like to decorate it with a rhinestone, by the way, but it's not necessary. But I wanted to come up with something different and to offer you more possibilities. So here I attached one of the historic filigrees in a suitable size and with a pattern that is matching the pendant. And that is basically my connection between the necklace part, between the cord part and the pendant. I connected them together with some size 15 seed beads. And indeed, I'm Spotting a question there. Yes, Sunshine, is that a Suwon rhinestone on the filigree or is it a glue one? It's a Suwon one, but actually it, and I uh, sewed it on with fire, fire line, but it would have been, I think, better if I just simply glued it on. So it's up to you. And hi, Claire, in the meanwhile, and Katarina, and Joyce, and Marta. Mm. 
<laughs> Marta, let's talk about it at the end. Please remind me, okay? The uh, the earrings. So this was blue amabla, and some possibilities how to hang it. Then after blue amabla, we were beading the triumph tulip. I have here the earrings, but in fact, this is another example that you can make anything into <laughs> anything. So let's first look at your beautiful creations. This is a bracelet created by Ginny. So she used the motifs here in her bracelet and connected them with square stitch bezeled chatons in a very brave choice of turquoise preciosa. There is uh, energy and there is elegance in this. I love this absolutely, Ginny. And then another version, Terry. Terry created a set, again, one of the historic filigrees and a pair of earrings. Then we have here Tammy. Tammy adjusted the length of the earring and added some extras at the bottom for her beautiful pair. And then we have here Mariana. And Mariana added a crystal connector in between the, payo uh, the square stitch bezel shot on and in between the ear stud. So as you can see, there are many, many possibilities and in fact I love seeing how the small motifs become so different in your on your bead mats here what we have learned really like to besides being and allowing ourselves to be playful with the motifs is to create arches from the fire polished beads like I wanted here to create a bit of negative space in between the internal square and in between these arches from the fire polished beads. So it became an airy, airy elegant pair of earring. But besides that, I also wanted to show you how to attach some extra components to your uh, earrings. So if a blingy earring uh, finding with a cubic zirconia would not be enough for you, then you can attach different kinds of beads, metal components, all kinds of uh, kinds of decorative elements to this. And I actually filmed a little video about how did I attach this flower. So you can find it on the, on the Beading School YouTube channel if you would like to do something similar. And hi, Sharon, in the meanwhile. So that was Triumph Tulip. And also I saw some versions when you were combining the Triumph Tulip motifs with some other elements. And that's also, that's already like the next step in thinking about creating jewelry. So when you can pull together different elements by adding similar colors, similar, uh, and finding the similarities or finding the accents, then uh, please be very uh, proud of yourself. And then we have here the next one, Stellata. Stellata was created by Zuzi, by my friend and colleague, and we beaded it during a no one has to be the long class. I have here two versions. This will become an earring and this will become a pendant. And let's look at your beautiful variations. We have here a set from Katya. Hi, Elena. So this set by Katya, it consists of a pendant and an earring. And as Zuzi showed on her example, you can play here with the design and create a full circle 
or leave it halfway and create a fan shape that is perfect for an earring. I love Katya's colors, by the way, how thanks to the size 11s in between the daggers, she put even more focus on the beautiful blue color of the chaton that she chose for the focal. Then we have here Nancy. Nancy used the ribbon and she chose the soft romantic tones with a stronger accent of the round 15s and the round 11s. Then we have here Miriam again <laughs> with a brown yellow pop in the middle and again going for the idea of creating a full flower for the pendant and then two fans for the earrings. I love this very much. It's so fresh and ready for the good weather. <laughs> and then we have here Belinda. And Belinda, what I like here very, very much, that Belinda added here some extra embellishments on top of the bezel. So she wanted to ha bring back the bicone beads on top of the uh, top of the earrings too, not only in between the daggers. So she added some extras. So that was also a really good idea. And then we are back to Katya and back a little bit to see that what was technically the most interesting part of this. So it is a nice flower shape, but since the daggers are long, then even long beads like 16 millimeter, then even if we have two holes to attach them properly, they could be floppy. However, Zuzi added here, pulled the, uh, pulled the inside hole really tight and nice together. And what I liked here a lot, even if I was sometimes struggling with uh, navigating my needle, but with the second place, I got used to the move. And I think this is a super nice, clever solution of Zuzi that she was anchoring the inside circle with the inside holes of the daggers to the bezel with some additional beads. I'm pushing now my needle through a size 15 that is anchoring the, uh, the bigger beads to the bezel. So that was a really good idea how to make this nice and sturdy. As Jay say, says, so nice and stiff. So this is something that I, I also saw that you really liked beading because there were so many beautiful versions in the club. So this was another tulip mania. And then the next one that we have beaded, it was Semper Augustus. It was an optional pattern. And I have here two variations so far. <laughs> so I have the original, which is not made into a finished jewel yet, with a crystal vitriol uh, light preciosa rivoli in the middle. And then I have a different one. I will tell you uh, in a little while why do I have the thread still hanging and what's happening here. But first, let's look at your versions. So here we have Mary and Mary, I think she has the, she must have the <laughs> drop and connector box, uh, the Bonnie and Clyde. She added two oval shaped uh, connectors to her, uh, to her motifs and made the motifs into a pair of earrings. Also, she played with the 
with the colors of the round 15s on the edges. So instead of using only one color of the round 15s on the edge of the motif, she used two different ones. So it became, like, I think it uh, visually even more deep this way and interesting. Deb is asking for the size of the crystal. And I need to count the petals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is the original size with an 18 millimeter Rivoli. However, what I really liked, unfortunately, I don't remember who made the smaller version, but it works also with a 14 millimeter Rivoli. And then you need to add seven petals all around seven repetitions of the same. And since that, uh, that was tested, it, it is a bit of a different look because the rhinestones come together closer. So I guess if the 18 millimeter one works with nine repetitions and the 14 millimeter one works with seven repetitions, then very probably the 16 millimeter Rivoli would work with eight. Let's see the other. Miriam again, and she used here the motif to be an extra decoration on top of a butterfly. <laughs> it was a really good idea. I love it. And also a really nice picture. And then we have here Yosin. Yosin's version is also super nice. She played a bit uh, starting out with the, with the colors from the box, but then playing with the colors of the seed beads. And it looks super cool in this variation. She also went for a filigree at the top. And then we have here Irina and her crystally snowflakey white, white pendant with gold. Super nice. Also with crystal AB rhinestones. And then we have here Antoinette. And Antoinette, not only did she switch also for a smaller Rivoli for a matching ring, but also she made only, uh, only part of the bezel for the ring to create a matching model. So that was also a very nice idea. Sometimes we don't have to search for a new solution by adding more. Sometimes we can like keep it smaller, keep it simpler. And that's just as good of an addition. And if we go back to the bead mat, then what I think that was interesting about it, that usually when we are thinking about bezeling cabochons, then we think about peyote. Recently, the square stitch bezel, like in the middle of Noir with the straight lines, got into I would say into our uh, library of beading techniques when it comes to bezeling cabochons, but those are still only two possibilities out of the endless <laughs> number how we can do this. So with Semper, on the front, there are rhinestones, Preciosa Suwon rhinestones on the bezel, and the back is done by netting. It's actually just to show you, this was the original. And then I created a simplified version that actually got into the tutorial. So the back is netting and the front is blingy thanks to the Suwon rhinestones. And the bezel itself is created from this. The Suwon rhinestones are not like Suwon on top of the peyote, but they are the bezel. Ariane says, I really liked the bezel. I'm happy to hear that, Ariane. By the way, there was recently another pendant. Lucky me. Oh! <laughs> Luckily, I could grab it. It just came to my mind. The Antea from the Beadworkers Guild journal that also had 
rhinestones as part of the bezel. So if you ladies liked the Semper Augustus and including the Preciosa Suvon rhinestones in your bezel, then I would recommend to look into the latest issue of the Beadworkers Guild Journal. It is a completely different way of bezeling. It's not completely, well, we have the rhinestones, but it, it's not, not netting, but actually gem duos on the backside. But the front, the front, the effect will be will be similar. And I wanted to show you. I didn't want to add more, uh, add a beaded strap here, so I added the super thin chain to the top of the filigree that I attached to Semper in the in a similar way than to the. Amable. And the chain that we had in the Maharaja box, it is really thin and nice and elegant. So I could I could push it through the top hole of the filigree. I don't like this knot here at the moment. So I will be adding some kind of beaded cover to it to, to hide this hide this connection. By the way, why I have here the thread is that uh, I managed to break the the bead <laughs> what was holding the holding the uh, filigree and I want to film it. I, I'm it's not a catastrophe. I can add a new bead in place of that, but I want to uh, film it and upload it to this little library on the YouTube channel so you can see how I did it and maybe get uh, maybe maybe uh, use the same technique if you need. So Semper was an order and then what else? What else did we have? We had then one that is very special to me and I think to many of us because this time it is a tutorial coming from a fellow beading school club member, Niti Anita Shakman. She's also, or she was here a little while ago. So I hope she's still here and I hope that she saw all the beautiful versions that you have beaded. The tutorial for this, it became a surprise gift for all our Beading School Academy students. So if you are logged in on the website and if you uh, if you click on the find the tutorial, then, then you can download it uh, for free. And here, what I really liked in this uh, motif that Nitti created, on one hand, the elegant lines created by the by the uh, storm duo beads, and how actually two pairs of storm duo beads interrupted by a two hole cabochon, they uh, they create these super nice lines independent. And another thing that is a bit unusual actually, and what I really like about this is that as you can see, and many of you actually beaded this already, uh, we have here in this one a four millimeter Preciosa Suvon rhinestone and also some six millimeter Preciosa Suvon rhinestone. And first logic would say that the big one goes in the middle and then the small ones, then small ones would go all around to keep it balanced. However, there is a different solution. There is a four millimeter rhinestone in the middle and then the big ones on the sides. And uh, yeah, still a nice, perfect balance is created here. And let's look at your variations, what you have created during the weekend. So this is from Mary. Also a perfect picture and the perfect pairing with the ear stud that she chose for it. 
absolutely love it. There are some colors from the Tulip Mania box and then uh, the six millimeter rhinestones and the drop and the ear studies and addition from Mary's own stash. And then we have Tammy. And I think when we see Tammy's, I, when I see Tammy's creations, then I uh, even, even at Mm, not uh, even before noticing her name, I always know that it's it's from her. Uh, there are always many little details, personalizations. So that's also nice how how Tammy added these extra icons for even more for even more playing, and then. It's not visible here because of the limitations of the space, but she used a kite-shaped cabochon at the bottom. Please find it in the club because this was also super nice. And as you can see, the Rosetta cabochons also work. Not only the smooth surface cabochons, but also the Rosetta cabochons. And we have here Kata. And Kata was playing here with two colors of Storm Duos. So she used a different color for the first pairs that she added, and then another one for the outside uh, color. There is not only a difference in the color, but also the effect, uh, the surface of the beads. So that's a very subtle, but a very nice contrast in Kata's creation. And then we have here Yosin, so well done. And Yosin with only a simple trick of turning the motif by 45 degrees, because I, I hanged mine and I think that's for also how the original was done by the bicon that sits in between the two storm duos. Then uh, instead of that, Yosin turned it by 45 degrees and she hanged the motif from the rhinestones. So that's already an older version where you can go. And I think if you turn it this way, then you can even create a nice matching bracelet and then we have here this was this was Nitty's original in dutch colors by the way as her city where she lives in utrecht was celebrating its 900th uh, anniversary then she wanted to beat this in white and red and blue as a as a brooch and then we have here Suzy. And Suzy's version also uses the Rosetta cabochons. So she chose uh, gentler, more romantic colors, but uh, the texture of the cabochons instead of the so smooth surface, it really gives a bit of energy into this. And Suzy is still deciding between a drop between a flower and between the tulip bead that what to hang at the bottom. I'm curious, what do you think, which would be, in your opinion, the best choice that Zuzi, Zuzi could make with this one? I don't know if she finished it already in the meanwhile, but I'm curious, what do you think? This is, by the way, another uh, possibility how you can use the tulip beads in the box that you can you can use them as instead of props as the hanging part with the motive. And see you Claire, I hope you find the cat and <laughs> enjoy your vacation. And hi Katya, good to see you. Tanya says that for her the drop would be the perfect solution. Cheryl says that the fabric flower. Ariana says that the drop. Ludka says all are so beautiful. Katya also would go for the fabric flower. Antoinette also. 
I think for me too, the fabric flower would be the best solution. I think you have noticed my love of big earrings and that would be the biggest possibility. So <laughs> yeah, Yosin also likes it and Antoinette and Miriam likes them all. Elena says, small novette just leaves. I really like your idea, Elena. Or Margaret says, make it changeable. And that's also that would also be an interesting solution. And then we have one last. Indeed, as Cheryl says, now we need to know what Zuzi will pick. I'm super curious about it. <laughs> so we have here one last motif that we beaded so far. There are a lot to come, but so far the last that we have beaded was the noir, the black tulip, <laughs> which is in fact purple. So this is my finished pair of earrings. But let's look at yours. There is noir, there is noir. I had so many nice variations here. So this is noir beaded by Marta. Marta went for pearls and the chaton in the middle. And what she did here that she used three millimeter bicon beads at the bottom to hang a pearl. So she still has a pearl in it. <laughs> like I did the cabochon in the middle, but for Marta, the pearl went to the bottom in the form of a drop. Then we have here Mechtab. And I find it super nice that Mechtab chose a round pearl for the middle. So as we said, as we talked about it at the beginning of the video, everything that is circular and eight millimeter big can go in the middle of Noir. It can be a Chaton, it can be a Rivoli, it can be a Preciosa Nacre cap that I used, but also it can be around a real, a real round pearl as Mechtab did. And uh, the color that she chose, it really pops in the middle. I think it was a, uh, a great, a great choice, Mechtab. And then we have here Kata. Kata chose some small tulip charms for the bottom, uh, for the tulipy mood. <laughs> and dark, but not entirely black as the real black tulips. And I love the surface of the cabochon. And it's a beautiful pair of earrings. And then we have here a nearly perfect black tulip beaded by Lotta. So I told you about the story of the black tulip, how tulip farmers are still hunting, still trying to uh, uh, breed <laughs> I'm trying to to grow a real black tulip because it always so far comes out dark purple but some of your noirs really turned out black so this is this is one example margarita is asking if these are matte beads and i think the majority of them are matte indeed for sure the inside circle around the chaton are matte and also the little picots the four millimeter pearls are also matte but i'm i think that the arches around the pearls are are shiny then we have here another black tulip from irina irina combined here the matte and the shiny surfaces. So even when beading only with black beads, still there is texture, still there is depth, still there, there, are, there are the details nicely visible. Then we have Kara, and Kara said that she's not finishing it yet because she uh, is waiting for the final inspiration what this motive will become i forgot to save it but what i really liked was also 
Veronica's version, where she changed the four millimeter pearls to some four millimeter fire polished beads. That was also a great idea. And just a bit back to my originals, that there are there is one new video again on the YouTube channel and also on the Facebook page, because what I wanted to achieve here, I used the um, ear studs from the box with the zircon inside. I wanted to make it look like as if the petal was sitting on top of the motif. So here, I uh, instead of instead of adding one of the round elevens here. I went through, I picked up the ear stud with two round 15s on both of its sides. Well, one and then the ear stud and another round 15. So that's how I managed to pull the ear stud closer to the motive and make it cover the, uh, at least a few beads on the side. And with some little loops, because I was afraid of it that it will get separated over time. So with, I made some little loops through the delica in the middle and the loop of the ear stud. I think I went through it uh, through them three times to really connect them and prevent them from uh, getting separated. And then I added the filigree at the bottom and I felt that I love this filigree, even if it's not one of the historic ones, but it's a super nice one. I love the shape and I wanted to add some, add some color to it. So with a smaller knife, because you got scared of my big knife when I was, <laughs> I was opening the claw. Maybe you have seen the videos then. Most of the questions were not about the technique, but like, oh my God, the big knife. <laughs> so I switched to a small knife so you don't get scared. And I actually removed a rhinestone from its setting, a rhinestone is the one setting, and I glued on the rhinestone. Uh, using a toothpick, so I, I, I wanted to prevent the glue from uh, getting on top of the filigree. And I did not have the precision glue anymore because it dried out mine, but I had some nice strong glue, so I applied it with a toothpick and then I pushed the rhinestone in the middle of it. And... Margarita is asking, how do you attach the bicon on the filigree? So that, that is in fact a rhinestone, the Suvan rhinestone without the setting. <laughs> and Marta says, the leaves that also can be connected this way. That's a good idea. So I hope that you found the jewels interesting also technically and you enjoyed beading them and today actually a new one is coming just after i finally finish talking then i will activate the newest tutorial for you in the virtual classroom of the beading school academy and it will be where do i have my my picture Okay, I'm not showing a picture, I will show it on my camera. So here it is. So this is the second signature jewel for the Tulip Mania box. And I created a pair of earrings. It's called Lily Rosa. Lily Rosa is an older type of tulip. And I wanted to play here with the tulip bud beads to create an interesting, interesting shape. But again, I wanted to add something also technically uh, interesting. It's easy to hang them, but we want to do more, I think, than just hanging the beads at the bottom of something. So... 
there are two interesting solutions in this. On one hand, I used the navet here instead of a connector. So I added it with some round 15 seed bits to the bottom of the whole motif. And I used a, a square stitch to cover its sides, the metal. And I wanted, but most importantly, I wanted to add the tulip buds to the motif in a way that they are as stable and as sturdy as I can make them. Because I think there are not so many tutorials out there in the, in the beading world with this, uh, with this bead shape. And when I see them being used in a motif, then usually they are just hanging from the bottom of something. But these beads are beautiful. They deserve so much more than just hanging. But I guess what, why they are not used very often this way, because they are in fact flat. So they would turn around if not fixed with some additional beads from the back. So the tutorial includes a very small additional detail, how they get fixed and uh, I guess if you will go to a pitch fight on a on a heavy metal concert and do some head banging, then they might turn around. But when wearing them on an, on, a, on an everyday during your everyday life, then uh, then they will be nice and always facing forward. So <laughs> so I hope that you will enjoy beading this this will uh, this is included in the fuchsia level memberships so it's a gift to uh, like included in the membership of all or fuchsia level students but it will also be available in the bead shop of course and this is one of the tutorials that we have prepared for you with the creative team this was designed by me, but while during the first half of our Tulip Mania teams, we were creating flowers from other shapes of beads. Now we are getting to beads which are flower shaped and using them in different designs. So today you will be able to beat the Lily Rosa, but for Friday we will actually have a video for you uh, showing you Zuzi's uh, pink diamond earrings featuring the beautiful tulip shaped beads that come from the same little family business family manufacturer in the Czech Republic as the ones that I had in Lily Rosa. So this week actually uh, the no one has to be the long class. It won't be a live class but instead of that uh, at the same time the recording the video for Susie's pink diamond will be available so you have inspiration for the weekend. And here, what I love about Zuzi's design that you can use it actually on its own. You can hang a drop at the bottom, but also use it in combination with some other designs and use the little tulip created from the tulip bead and the navets as a connector. So there are many, many different possibilities for it. And I hope that you enjoy beading the Tulip Mania designs, because today I will also open up the possibility to upload your pictures for the Tulip Mania mini challenge. I showed you already last week that what you can win. But what I would like to emphasize is that even if there are rewards for two or four beaters every time, but the real value of 
the mini challenges team by team is a little extra motivation for you to really focus on the inspiration, really try to like get together everything, what you have learned, gather all your thoughts and go one step further in your beading journey or just create something that you would always like to remember when thinking about this time when we were we were uh, getting inspired by this specific team. So I will open up the possibility to enter the Tulip Mania mini challenge later today. And I can't wait to see your creations. And in case that you will need some other uh, other uh, shapes or other colors maybe to complete your challenge piece, or you just would like to play more with these designs and with these possibilities, then at the moment, my colleague and friend Andrea, she is uploading lots of new beads to the beading school bead shop, including the lily flowers and the tulip buds. These are the ones that you need for the lily rosa. And this is also a cute shape. These are the these are the tulip, uh, the bigger tulips that you need for Zuzi's earring. An extra shape, the origami flower. And actually, we also managed to get some new rose petals and also some new Rosetta Duho cabochons. And those shapes that are new to the bead shop, the origami flowers and the tulip buds and the lily flowers, they will all be available for you for a uh, nice 17% discount for exactly a week until next week's Coffee Time with Erica. In case that you would like to, uh, to get them together with your next Beading School Academy box, then you can, uh, you can choose the Join with Order in Progress option. And in that case, we will put them aside for you and you will not pay anything extra for shipping. We will ship and pack everything together with your with your next box. So this is I created, I wanted to show you, I created uh, new flowers and petals category in the beach shop. So uh, to make it easier for you to find, there are also some flower cup beads available at the moment. So the 17% discounts, Discount is for the completely new shapes. So the flower cups, the lily flowers, the origami flowers, and the tulip shapes. You don't need to add any kind of uh, coupon code. It is applied directly. And do you have any other questions? I would love to answer them now. I saw a question from Connie. She's asking, how was Delft? Delft was amazing. Delft was amazing, Connie. Uh, the atmosphere of the city, the vintage market on Saturday, a nice restaurant in the evening. On Sunday, we slept there, actually. Thank you, and thank you so much for asking. And on Sunday, we went to the Fermier Museum and I bought a book about, a fictional book about the famous painting, The Girl with the Pearl Earring, and I enjoy it very much. <laughs> Jessica is asking, when will the small novels be available in the shop? Thank you for asking, Jessica. I hope very soon they are uh the new colors are still traveling at the moment so we are waiting for them 
but I hope that in a week or two they arrive and then we will be able to make pictures and upload them. And hi, Peter from New Orleans. <laughs> so, thank you so much, ladies, for joining me today. Thank you for your beautiful creations. And on Friday, I am coming with the recording of Susie's video. And in the meanwhile, with other interesting things for you and inspiration. <laughs> And I would like to wish you a nice rest of the day and lots of inspiration. Take care.